2022 Ducati Multistrada Pike Peak First Ride Review But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. This is an unusual test. Ducati's Multistrada V4 Pikes Peak hasn't been officially announced, meaning this was a blind test of a prototype, with the first production Pikes Peak due to be officially revealed at the end of this year. The original Pikes Peak bike, read the ICMA 2015, first look at the 2016 Ducati Multistrada Enduro and Pikes Peak article, was produced as a homage to Ducati's success at the world-famous hill climb, which the mark famously won in 2018 with the late Carlin Dunn at the helm. Now with 17-inch wheels the 2022 V4 should be the most track-focused multistrata we've yet seen. I was invited to the Modena circuit in northern Italy to test this new and exciting 17-inch wheel machine. However, after several sessions, in perfect conditions, I can confirm that this promises to be the fastest multistrata ever and should appeal to those who want a mixture of track performance as well as the multi's traditional comfort and ability over a meaningful distance. Ducati wouldn't reveal any numbers, but the Pikes Peaks Panigale derived Gran Turismo V4, now with conventional spring-operated valves, of course, and 36,000-mile valve service intervals, is sure to have more kick than the older Pikes Peaks Testistrata DVT-L Twin. The current Multistrata V4 S170 horsepower at 10,500 revolutions per minute is up from Twin's 158 horsepower at 9,500 revolutions per minute, and I expect Peaks Peak power to be the same or perhaps slightly higher, but not a dramatic change. Ducati has opted for 17-inch wheels on the pre-production bike, which highlights both its track focus and new lack of off-road ambition, 19-inch are used on the other V4 Maltese. To show how serious Ducati is about its track intentions, the test bike was fitted with Pirelli SC1 slicks front and rear, 120-70-17 front, 260-17 rear. The Italians have also opted for semi-active Olin suspension, front and rear, instead of the electronic skyhook Marzaki items found on the 2021 Multi V4S. The older twin cylinder Pikes Peak ran conventional Olin's units. There are four riding modes to choose from, race, sport, touring, and urban. The race mode has replaced the standard bike's enduro mode, in fact, there is no off-road option. Sophisticated rider aids are linked to these modes, including lean-sensitive traction control and ABS, plus wheelie control. There's also an up and down quick shifter. The prominent TFT dash highlights the riding mode, rider aids, and the pre-selected suspension setup, even the spring preload. The radial mounted Brembo style ma brake calipers appear to be the same as those on the V4S Multistrata, although the discs and brake pad material are likely to be different. Like the rider aids, the lean sensitive ABS will have a different setting compared to the long travel Multi V4. I know this tight and twisty Modena track like the back of my hand, so lap 1 is used to scrub in the slicks, then it's flat out, pushing for a fast lap. At the end of the straight, toward the top of 5th gear, it's hard on the Brembo stoppers and back to 2nd gear on the quick shifters auto blipper. Stopping power is impressive, while the bike's stability and control are equally good. I thought the prototype might struggle on such a tight track, but it makes light work of even the 2nd gear turns. Knee down left to knee down right is so effortless it can't just be down to the smaller diameter wheels. I assume Ducati has reduced both unsprung weight and perhaps the bike's overall weight too. It may also have moved the center of mass to sharpen the steering. In sport mode, power isn't ferocious, and I suspect available torque is limited in the first two gears. It's a quick bike but not harsh or aggressive. With the throttle against the stop, I can feel the rider aids controlling the front wheel lift in second gear, lovely. As you'd expect with Pirelli slicks and ideal weather conditions, grip isn't an issue. Instead, the problem lies in getting used to carrying so much lean and corner speed on a bike originally designed to work off-road. Sooner rather than later, pegs start to scrape and I begin to run a fraction wide of corner apexes, indicating the limit for the sport mode. Into race mode, and the suspension is now catering for track riding on grippy tires. The ride is firmer, preload is up from 16 clicks to 21 clicks. Rider aids are also reduced, in fact, I could have opted to switch them off completely, but as this is a priceless prototype and one of only two in existence, I opted to keep a safety net in place. The difference between race and sport mode is instantly evident. There is more chassis control and obviously less fork travel which, with less intrusive lean-sensitive ABS, allows deeper braking.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.